senior tech instruction, and we have four members, um, Ali, Devin, Grace, and Tabitha. All right, hello. I'm gonna be the one sharing my screen, so give me one second. Okay. All right, so our project was on senior tech instruction, and we'll just briefly go through and introduce ourselves. I'm Allie, she, her pronouns, and I'm at the Roseville Library serving adults. I'm Devin, and I'm at the Shoreview Library serving youth and adults. Hi, I'm Grace, I use she, her, and I'm serving at Project for Pride and Living. I'm Tabitha and I use she, her pronouns and I'm serving at Minneapolis Central Library. So for our project, we chose to focus on providing tech support to senior citizens, specifically those living in senior living communities. We know that the pandemic has been a time of isolation for many seniors who can't see family or move about the community like they used to. And we, uh, and just who often don't have access to technology or the technology skills that would help them connect to other people virtually. So each of our project members um, have had, you know, all of us have had exposures to seniors with tech questions to varying degrees, um, whether through our sites or through our own personal experiences. So we felt that focusing our project on this population would concentrate our efforts in a more meaningful way. Um, and the question, the overarching one that guided this project was just how can we bring digital literacy instruction and potentially computers, if time allowed, to um, senior citizens who can't come to us? So working in that virtual environment. Yeah, so then we wanted to find a community partner who would um, you know, be able to connect us to seniors. And Joel suggested Episcopal Homes which I was actually familiar with because I have, I've had family members who live there. Um, I put a little bit of information about them on this slide. You can see that they offer a wide variety of care and serve like people in all kinds of different situations in their lives. So we set up a meeting with them. They were very interested in working with us and they told us a little bit about what their residents' needs were. Um, it sounded like you know, a lot of people had tech questions, had underutilized devices, you know, devices that maybe someone had given them, but they didn't really know how to use, um, or they didn't have devices at all. Um, and I think staff at Episcopal Homes was kind of overwhelmed with having to help people with tech questions, and they were really grateful for the help. So they gave us some ideas of topics that we could cover, and we kind of put together a plan for how we were going to share the information. So after figuring out our goals and solidifying our partnership with Episcopal Homes, we needed to figure out what our plan was for our project. Um, we had three major parts to this plan, written resources, workshops, and one-to-one -one computer help appointments. Um, the workshops were definitely the hardest part to schedule out. Um, and between our group schedule, Episcopal Homes availability, um, and also just different events going on at Episcopal Homes, we decided that March would be the best month and then Friday afternoons would be the best time slot. Um, because of this, we had to um, kind of, you know, really get our curriculum together before that and really get our written resources together before that. So all of that needed to be done by the end of February. Um, and then we had our tech help appointments throughout March and April. That way we could support um, during the classes and also further on if people had um, questions that came up later on. Yeah, so the first part of the project that we knew we wanted to complete was a series of written curriculum that could be distributed to residents at Episcopal Homes. Uh, due to the scope of our project, as well as just time constraints on our end and Episcopal Homes end, we knew we couldn't teach workshops on every topic that um, the residents might have wanted help with. Uh, but we also knew that everyone who wanted to attend our workshops may not be able to attend. So we created handouts to go with each of our workshops 
as well as on various other requested topics, uh, such as public libraries and ebooks, flip phones, and social media that could then be given to the residents. Yeah, so while we had the curriculum as kind of like a lasting resource um, that will hopefully be able to be used, you know, after we're gone, um, we also want to have some workshops on topics that were like especially essential to the residents that, you know, we'd heard from staff at Episcopal Homes, like were really necessary. And so we had uh, five different sessions and we did them over Zoom, but they had set up like an auditorium in Episcopal Homes for people to watch it like distanced. Um, and then other people just like zoomed in on their computers. And so we taught computer basics, um, iOS slash Android, email, Zoom, and then um, we had the other civic engagement group, Internet Scams, which you'll hear from later, um, talking, about, talking about that. So these were kind of good like starting points to give some basics and take some questions. And we did those every week in March. And then um, we'll talk next about the one-on-one -on -one sessions where we were kind of able to build on those. So in March and April, we did one-to-one uh, -one tech help over Zoom or phone calls, just depending on what the residents had access to. We offered these tech help appointments Monday through Thursday. Each of us took a two hour slot and had hour long appointments. So we were able to help about eight people a week. Um, and these appointments I would say went, were really um, successful. We all kind of had really positive feedback on it. We definitely had some challenges and stumbling blocks um, as I'm sure most of the other CTEPs also agree when teaching um, you know, computer help and tech help over um, Zoom or over the phone, um, but we did um, sort of meet up every other week, I think it was, and sort of um, came together and gave advice to each other. And one of the big ones was just, if they were on Zoom and had a different device, we would have them hold the device up to the camera so we could see exactly what was going on on their screen. Um, so yeah, overall, it was a really successful um, program to have tech help for these residents, but also there was quite a few challenges involved. Uh, so the main takeaway from this project, um, we would say is that the desire for technology instruction and help within our, uh, those of our, those who are older in our population um, is not going anywhere. There's still very much a need for this sort of uh, help. And while in-person tech help would have been easier um, for both parties, um, as Ali said, we were still able to make things work pretty well within the constraints of COVID guidelines um, for everyone's safety. But a direction that could be helpful for uh, any future projects in this vein um, would be access to devices and technology as we just weren't able to cover that very well within the scope of the project at this time. Um, but it is still a big unmet need for uh, residents at Episcopal Homes. Um, but this would definitely be a great community partner and project to continue with um, for future CTEPs. The need is still super relevant. And Episcopal Homes uh, has been a great partner to work with on this. And we're just very grateful to have worked with them. Um, yeah, so any questions? All right, thank you. Um, we have a question from Stacy. You all did such a beautiful job building trust with older adult learners. Do you have any learnings on how you were able to do this, especially virtually? It's a really good question. I feel like a lot of it just comes down to um, like 
being very open to like having them take the lead and just being there for support, like just listening, understanding their questions, um, asking as many questions to help, you know, get to exactly what they're looking for. Um, but I don't, we don't have any like learnings developed on how we were able to do this, but I think that would be a good project in the future things to like do in a handoff document just to, you know, if somebody wanted to continue this, like writing that out. So that's a good thing we should think about. <laughs> Another thing I would add is like, you know, taking some steps to gauge where they're at in working with the device. I've definitely learned this, like, if you're, if somebody's having a problem with email, like you want to make sure that they know how to like open the email application or quit it or stuff like that so that you're not accidentally working at like too high of a level. I mean, I think that that's been applicable like throughout my service year, but that's just one thing I learned. Um, Grace, you kind of touched a little bit on this or you went in, in this direction. So Anne had a question to expand on that. Like what were some of the common issues that you were able to help residents with? One, oh, uh, one of the biggest things that I helped people with were video calls. Um, a lot of them were, um, you know, like I wanted to, I want to video call my family and I, I don't even know where to start. And so just helping them um, have Zoom or if they did have video calls before then, a lot of them were just kind of like, I got there, but I don't really like know what everything means and I want to know more. Um, so that was a big thing was just um, helping them with video calls and chat and just connecting them to um, people who they, they weren't able to see during COVID. All right. Um, another question from Arian. I'd love to hear more about the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Did they have any in-person support from the staff to get into them, or did you have to wing it more or less? Um, so did you just take phone calls, or was it just you? Yeah, so it kind of depended on like where the residents lived in Episcopal homes, because there was different levels of care and like different levels of privacy. So for some uh, residents we weren't allowed to like call them at all or like even know their name or anything about them so in that case usually staff at Episcopal Homes would just like set up a Zoom on their own laptop. Um, in other cases we were able to call them or receive calls but yeah it kind of just depended but yeah the staff were definitely present and often were there like helping along in person too so that was really nice. 